Toward the end of the last lecture, I gave you a word of caution to watch out for what happens when you try to call uh, subclass methods on an object that is pointed to by a superclass variable. Okay, if you need to pause this video, rewind it, listen to that sentence again. Today we're going to continue that discussion uh, in the context of working with arrays of objects. Okay, now an array, just to remind you, it can hold either primitive types like ints, booleans, doubles. You can see that example on the left here. This is an array of ints. It can also hold reference types like a string or a student or a circle. Uh, this may not mean anything to you right now, but it, that can mean abstract or concrete references. That's uh, this example here. Uh, we'll talk about abstract references next lecture, most likely. It can also hold interface types like shape or pen. If you're working with an array of a primitive type, like an array of ints, that's pretty straightforward. And working with an array of some concrete class like student or string, that also doesn't really give us a lot of problems. And that makes sense because all the elements, if you're working with an array of integers or an array of students, they're all of the exact same type and they all respond to all the same operators and messages and, and all that. I mean, if you have an array of integers, you can add all integers. If you have an array of students, all students have a, a get name method and so on. But when the element type of an array is an interface, like in this third picture, things get a little dicier. Same if it's an abstract class or a superclass of one or more other classes. That means that the array can actually contain objects of different types. So they might not all have the exact same methods that they respond to. So today we're going to learn to deal with that in a, when we're working with arrays of different object types. It's pretty common to declare and instantiate an array of some interface type, uh, like the shape interface that, that we saw before. As an, as an example, this code makes an array of 10 cells, uh, and it, it's going to hold shapes in it. Now, in this array, we can store instances of any class that implements shape. So, I mean, rect, or circle, or wheel, or any other class that we decided should implement the shape interface. Now, as long as we send shape messages to the elements of the array, there's really no problem. You know, we can sort of ignore the fact that they all that all the objects are of different concrete classes. Okay, and in fact, this is this is polymorphism at work. So as an example, we can see here, let's draw all the shapes that are in the array. If you remember, draw is a shape interface method. So we can go through this array called shapes and just call draw on every single one using a pen instance. We could also move all the shapes or stretch them or change their colors or anything else that is in the shape interface. No problem. But as soon as we want to do something more specific to a shape, you know, for instance, setting the number of spokes of a wheel, we have to do some of the trickery that we talked about earlier with the casting. So let's assume for a moment that we know exactly where the wheel object in the array is. It's at element two. That's where the wheel object in our array of shapes is. So then if we wanted to set its spokes to five, we would just go through the following steps. First, we would just access the array element using the subscript. Then we'd cast that element, which is sort of masquerading as a shape, but really we know at its core is a wheel. We'd cast it to a wheel. And then finally, after casting it, we'd use the wheel-specific method that we wanted to use. You can see what this line of code looks like here uh, with the array indexing, casting, and then the wheel-specific method. Now note how we use the parentheses so that we can override the precedence of that method selector of that period, right, of that dot. We need to cast this to a wheel before we run the method set spokes. But things get hairier if we don't actually know where the wheel is in some array of shapes. Right? We can't just manually index into the array, get a single element and cast it and do whatever we... If we didn't know where the, where the wheel was, a loop is sort of a sensible solution, and we could try going through every element of the array. So here, that's exactly what we do. We've got a pen instance, and we loop through every element in the array, and each one we cast to a wheel and then call set spokes. The problem is, you can't just cast everything. Not all the elements in the array are wheels. And if we try to cast an object to a type that is not its actual type, we end up with a class cast exception. Okay, so we can't cast a rect to a wheel. It just doesn't work. And it doesn't make sense if you think about it. So in this case, we first have to determine that a shape is a wheel before we try to cast it. And this is where Java's instance of operator comes to the rescue. 
So here's a loop that solves this problem. We're looping through every element in the array, and for each one, we're checking to see whether that element is an instance of wheel. And if it is a wheel, then we can go ahead and do our casting. Otherwise, in this case, we leave it alone. In other words, instance of is gonna give us a true or false value, telling us whether the thing we're looking at is an instance of the reference type that we give it on the other side. Now we've been looking at an array of an interface type in this example, but the same thing applies to arrays of abstract classes, which we'll talk about next lecture, or super classes of one or more other classes. All right, so for instance, if I had an array of circles and some of the elements in my array were circles and some of them were wheels, the same thing applies. So two important points to walk away with. First is this, when the element type of an array is a reference type or an interface or a superclass, objects of those types or of any subtype, you can insert them directly into the array. Okay, pause it for a second, read through the little text under here if you want clarification or some examples. Second big point to walk away with, after you access an object in an array, you gotta be careful. You gotta send it only the messages, you gotta call only the methods that it can handle, or you need to cast it down to a type that actually can run those methods. Don't try to call set spokes with a circle. Now what you may be thinking is, well, if object is at the root of the hierarchy, that means I could really have an array of objects and then I could put basically anything into there. Obviously not primitive types like an int or a care or a boolean, but any reference type, any class. And you're right, an array of type object is the most flexible of any that we've seen so far. Not only can you insert any object into an array of objects, but you can also replace any array of objects with another array of any reference type, which means you could pass one as a parameter or return it as the value of a method. Okay, so we've seen examples of, uh, of sort of generalized searching and sorting methods that use this feature of an object, that use this openness. Now from the implementer's perspective, in the, in the case of say a linear search, you actually don't have to worry about the actual type of the array elements because all the objects understand the equals message. Okay, and that's the only one that we need to really work with. That's the only one that we're gonna use with the array elements. But suppose you were doing something like binary search or maybe the sorting methods. In that case, you're gonna wanna use the compare to method with all the objects that you're searching through or, or sorting. Now before doing that, you gotta make sure that you can cast them to type comparable. Comparable is an interface uh, that we often implement and it, it specifies certain methods that we can use to compare two objects to each other. So you gotta cast them to comparable after you get them from the array. That means you gotta make sure you pass an array of comparable objects as a parameter to the methods. But the key takeaway is this. But that was a bit of a diversion. The key takeaway is this. Generally, you need to be really careful after you access an object from an array of objects. More often than not, you gotta cast it to something because the object class itself just doesn't have really very many of the methods that we find it useful. Couple exercises for you before you head out. Take a look at these code chunks. Assume that student is defined as it was in the past. Uh, find any errors in this code or state that the little code chunk is correct. Take a couple minutes, pick through these, and discuss with your friends which ones you think are correct.